All right, today is part two of the Advanced Architect series where I'm going to be talking about compound keys. All right, today we're going to be talking about compound keys. Now, imagine you're a retailer with stores across the country. It's common to separate these stores by region. So the stores in the west might fall under region 1, the stores in the middle of the country might fall under region 2, and the stores in the east might fall under region 3. Within these regions, you gave out store numbers. So store 1, store 2, and store 3 in region 1, store 1, 2, and 3 in region 2, and store 1 and 2 in region 3. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what a table might look like in a data warehouse for this type of st region store setup. So you have your column region ID, your store ID, and maybe a store description. So let's take a look and add some data to this table based on the map we just drew in the previous slides. Region 1, add region 2, and we'll add region 3, stores 1 and 2. Now normally when you create an attribute, create it based on store ID. That won't work in this case, and that's because if we wanted to select store number one, there are three records with store number one. And in this instance, in order to uniquely identify a store, you need to use the region and the store ID. Now let's jump over to MicroStrategy and look at how we do this with a compound key. All right, now the first thing I want to show you here is just a simple report with region and store, as you can see here on the screen. Um, I just want to show you what that looks like in MicroStrategy. So let's take a look here. And as you might expect, region 1 has store 1, 2, and 3. Region 2, the mid region, has store 1, 2, and 3. And region 3, the east region, has store 1 and 2. All right, now the next thing I'm going to show you is how I currently have the store attribute configured, why it's wrong, I'll demonstrate why it's incorrect, and then I'll show you the correct way to set this up. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's take a look at our store attribute. Edit that. And as you can see here, it's got a single ID on the store ID column. Okay? Now let's see, but I, let's see what this looks like on a report. So let's go ahead and use this. I have a test report here. Let's edit this. And as you can see, I have a, I'm filtering based on store one, right? Now, we, we, this is, we can probably see where this is going already, um, and you can see the description is East Store. Now, let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. So we're just filtering, and we only have store in our, uh, on our report template. So we're just trying to pull one store, basically. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we have one record return, but it's the West Store. Here it says East Store. We're trying to filter on Store 1, but there's multiple Store 1s. So how do we set this up right, right? This is clearly wrong. So let's go ahead and, and I'll show you how to set this up correctly. And we're going to create what's called a compound key. But actually, before I do that, let's add a metric here just to give this a little more context so you can see just how wrong this is. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll add sales. Let me remove this. Let's, there we go. Add sales. We'll run this. And, whoa, that doesn't look right. So it's returned multiple results for store one, all the same value. No, that doesn't look right. So now let's go ahead and create the compound key. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. Let's edit our store attribute. And we're going to go ahead and create a new attribute form. We're going to select region ID this time. Click OK. This is not a date. We'll change this to region. And we'll do we'll just do none here for now. Number, yes, and click OK. Oh, got to select our lookup table. Click OK. Now, we've added region to our attribute forms. The next thing we want to do here is we want to select both attributes both attribute forms, ID and region, holding down control. Right click, select group, click yes, and we'll click OK. And we'll put a description here. Compound key. Click OK. And now, as you can see, our ID 
is a combination of our original ID, which is store ID, and region, region ID. So we'll click save and close. So now let's go ahead and refresh our schema so the changes take effect. Okay, and let's create a new report and let's see how this looks now. So we'll create a blank report and we'll go ahead and select, create our filter. So let's select our store filter. Let's click. Let's choose some elements and oh, it's already looking different, looking better, right? So we can see a description, West Store 1, ID, and Region. We can see both of these now in our available objects. So let's go ahead and select our store. Click OK. And we'll add that to our template. And we'll also add sales here. OK. So now let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. OK. Now that looks a lot better. Now you can see the results were not no longer 19,500 19, um, repeating values, none of that. Now we have a single store and sales of 2,500. So that looks much better. Now, if you want to take a look at the SQL and see how this is done, let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it's a, it, it it's so in our filter it selects based on store and region equal one equal one so it so it uses so our compound key tells it listen if you want to select use this attribute right if you want to query this attribute you need to join on or filter on both of these columns right store and region that creates a unique attribute or a unique store so to speak um, and you can see it does that down here. It creates this temporary table and then to create your final results, again, it joins on both on region. It joins our temporary table to our lookup table on both region and store. Um, and it does this obviously to get the description because the description is in our lookup table. And then this temporary table contains basically our, the facts that it got from above, right? I don't think I need to explain the SQL to you. Um, but yeah, you can see it's joining on region and store, and that is the impact or the effect creating a compound key has in Architect. So hopefully all that makes sense. Um, and thanks for watching. All right, so that'll do it. This is a new channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.